Um, I'm Chris Pig, by the way, um, and this is Black Pig Studios. And um, I'm going to be showing you the correct way to cut lino and a braid lino and print lino. I'm just going to show you the whole thing. Um, so we're going to start with how to cut lino, which anybody would think is just the easiest thing in the world, but actually there are some rules to it. Throughout my life, I've been taught badly by people and through bitter experience and autodidactism, I've learned how to do it right. So first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to measure from this piece of lino, we're going to measure the dimensions of this image here, because this is the image that we're going to be dealing with, okay? And it's 18 and a half centimeters. So now I'm going to go to my block and measure that and then the cutting bit now the cutting bit this is why this is so very important because I was taught at school by somebody who thought it was really clever right they think if you score the hessian backing to this you can just snap it in half but if you do that what happens is you get an edge like this. Can you see? Where it's all just, well, it's just cat handed. We want a nice crisp edge to it. So I've measured that 18 and a half centimetres. Then I'm going to draw in, oh, hang on, there we are. Draw in the line for that. And now this is a top printmaker's tip number one. When you're cutting with a straight edge, what tends to happen as you're drawing the, the knife down is it starts to slip like this. Yeah? Even if you're trying to you're, you're reinforcing it with your hand all the way down, there's a problem with that. One way of helping with this, although not not entirely foolproof, is to get a bit of masking tape. and stick your ruler down, stick your straight edge down. So that masking tape is half on the half on the straight edge and half on the lino behind. Right, and then that should it's not absolutely foolproof but it helps to keep it into position, right? Now, the lino we're using here is the modern grey lino. I grew up using lino called battleship lino, which is the old brown stuff. The grey lino takes a bit of getting used to if you're used to battleship, but I think on balance it's superior. What I've done there then, see, is I've just cut one line all along the line I've scored. Then you simply bend it like that and it snaps. Then you get the blade and then you cut the Hessian backing by running it down like that, yeah? Okay, now the difference is is that your line is absolutely 100% spot on and crisp. Okay, so the next bit then is we've got to abrade the surface because if you were to look at this in section under magnification, you'd see that the surface is uneven like this. We need to get that as, as flat as possible with a very, very mild abrasive, which is just a bit of um, wet, wet and dry. Okay, so that's, that's a sponge with a little bit of water in it. What this does is it cancels out all of those anomalies and makes it as flat as possible which means it's better for printing because obviously when you're taking a roller over a surface the smoother it is the more the better it will take the ink but as well it makes the surface porous 
So if you want to do a transfer, either of graphite or um, photocopy or um, graphite, so say if you're making a tracing or something like that, it'll just lock itself into the matrix itself perfectly spot on. So it's just a quick up and down on this. Doesn't take much work. I'm not abrading this end because I'm going to cut this off to size in a minute. And then just to finish it off, just to clean off what you've abraded, some methylated spirits, good old methylated spirits, ethyl alcohol. Just give it a wipe down with that. Mm. And that will dry in next to no time. In fact, you can watch it to dry if you've not got much of on. <laughs> there you go, that's ready to go now. Okay, there we go. So, uh, just going to cut the bottom half now. Right, so the next bit now, I've just got this printed off the printer on my computer. Um, it's the image I'm going to use. There's lots of different ways of transferring images. This is just the quickest way. I don't normally go to a photograph verbatim. I usually muck about in some way or another, working from photographs, um, but maybe I'll, I'll do some additions here and there. What this is just going to do is it's going to give me a very rough photograph that will then be transferred to the lino, which I will then work in with um, an indelible pen to get the details that I want that is then going to be the guide for the gouge, okay? So here we go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the put it face down, the block face down on the image. And I'm going to trim the top edge here. Hang on a minute. Uh, trim the top edge so that I can then make a hinge with a bit of masking tape, a printmaker's friend. Okay. So flip that over. The way we're going to do this, this is where technical demonstration really does come into its own. What we're going to do is I'm going to flood this image with um, acetone, dilute acetone, because if you use real acetone, it will melt your block, as I found out once demonstrating this uh, in Atlanta to a group of printmakers. Um, it was transferring an image to engravers plastic, and I, got, I asked a technician, Terry Dilling, uh, for some acetone, because I thought it was acetone. And then I ran it through the press and it went just melted on the spot, which was not my finest moment. But thankfully I realised what it what the problem was, which is this nail varnish remover. Good old nail varnish remover. Um, and that's what you need to do. So this has been degreased already with um, with alcohol. This is my um, acetone. All right, in an attractive bottle. The problem is, there's lots of problems. Acetone, first of all, it's ever so bitter, so you get it on your fingers and you can taste it on your food and everything for ages afterwards. It's disgusting stuff. Also, it evaporates like bilio. It evaporates faster than methylated spirits. Um, and it's very, very important that you keep everything wet as you're working on this. So what I've got... Um, this is just a bit of um, thick paper to, uh, as backing to protect the swanskin blankets. 
Are we ready now? Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. I've got to keep this very, very fluid. What I'm doing is I'm flooding a piece of toilet paper with tons of acetone, covering the block with it like this, and then quickly flipping this down. There will always be, there's always creases in this when you do this. You can't get it crease free. But what I'm doing is I'm working very fast to get it flat on the surface. Really just go, go mad with the acetone. You, you can't you can't skimp on that. You see what I'm doing? Okay, so that's the whole thing down. It has to be done ever so ever so ever so quickly. So what's happening here is the acetone is melting briefly melting the uh, the ink from the from the it's not a photocopy but uh, from the copy here and then we've got to get that whilst it's still fluid we've got to get it through the press under very very stiff pressure you can see how I'm working on this whole real press here right now the proof of the pudding Okay, so then now what should happen is the image is transferred. Whew. Be still my beating heart. Right, now that's not very good in terms of a transfer, but it's just enough for me to then work on inking it in with an indelible pen and a flip of the image okay so the image that's the positive um, I've just printed it so that it's flipped so that it's a mirror image so that I can work from the mirror image to get the uh, to get the design down okay that's the next step So now what we've got is the image very very lightly done on the block and with an indelible ink pen I'm now inking the whole thing in. Now this is a very important thing with lino cut. You do have to try and choose, you do have to select a drawing medium that is sympathetic to the lines you're going to be making with the gouge. So quite often I get with students, I, I, I have a problem where they come along with uh, a really really tight little H pencil and they're wanting to do some some lino cut and of course the gouge is not going to be, be able to, be, to respond to the fineness of those lines. So I'm using something here that's a little bit thinner than the line that a V gouge would make. A V gouge is my best friend and I do... It used to be about 95% of my work was done with a V gouge. Now now I use more of a variety. Can you see how I'm working there? Look, that's that's uh, yep, absolutely. quite nice and quick and fluid. So what I should do is I'm not going to do the whole artichoke because otherwise we'd be here till Christmas. What I'm going to do is isolate the section and just carve that bit. Okay. Normally I'm working from photographs and drawings. It's a mixture of the two. Um, and if it's a very big lino cut, what you do then is something known as gridding up which we don't have time to deal with today. 
but uh, it's an extremely efficient process invented by the ancient Egyptians and still in use today. Right, we'll take what I think that'll that'll do actually.